What's up you guys, it's Hannah, welcome back to my channel. I have a very important video for you guys today and a very special guest who will be joining me. So I'm really excited to introduce to you guys Public Health Service Officer, Lieutenant Tia Rogers, who is an epidemiologist at the CDC. Today, Dr. Rogers and I got to sit down and answer some of your most asked questions about COVID-19. I did put out something the other day asking you if you had the opportunity to talk to a health professional about COVID-19, what kind of things would you ask? And I looked through the responses and I picked the ones that I saw showing up the most. Those are what I'm going to be asking Dr. Rogers today. I'm really excited for you guys to meet her and to hear all of the great insights that she has to share. So without further ado, let's get into it. Actually, before we get started, I just wanted to put a disclaimer out there that I have turned off all monetization for this video. So I personally will not be making any money from this. And I also was not paid to do this or to post this video. I wanted to make this video and do this interview purely to spread information on my platform that I felt like could be beneficial to someone watching. Watching. So yeah, with that being said, let's get into the video. Dr. Rogers, I would like to start by thanking you so much for being here with me today and for answering some of the questions that myself and my audience have about COVID-19. I actually asked them to send me anything that they would like to ask a health professional like yourself if they had the chance. So I wanted to take the opportunity today to ask some of the most popular ones and hopefully provide some helpful information and insight for anyone who comes across this video. So when I asked my audience what they wanted to know about COVID, many people were wondering if someone has already had COVID, can they get it again? Yeah, so in general, reinfection means a person was infected or they got sick once and then they recovered and then later they became infected again. So based on what we know from similar viruses, some reinfections are expected. Cases of reinfection with COVID-19 are very rare. However, they have indeed been reported. So we're still learning more so we can encourage everyone to continue to follow the best practices for preventing the spread of COVID-19. And those best practices include wearing your mask, staying at least six feet from others who don't live with you, and washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, which that's the same amount of time that it takes to sing the happy birthday song twice over. And if you can't do that, simply use a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. When looking at the recent drastic increase in COVID-19 cases, are the symptoms the same now as they were during our first wave that we saw earlier in the year? And are there any prominent symptoms that are seen across the majority of cases since we have seen so much of a variety of symptoms presented? Well, Hannah, part of my role during my contact tracing work as an epidemic intelligence service disease detective has really been to assess the symptoms that could indicate that someone may have COVID-19. Now, people with COVID-19 have reported a wide range of symptoms, ranging from mild symptoms to really, really severe illness. And those symptoms may appear anywhere from two to 14 days after exposure to the virus. But in general, the list of symptoms indicating that someone might have COVID-19 include fever or chills, a cough, shortness of breath or difficulty breathing, fatigue, muscle or body aches, having a headache, new loss or of taste or smell, having a sore throat, and experiencing congestion or a runny nose, nausea or vomiting, and even diarrhea. Now, it's important to keep in mind that the list that I just gave you doesn't include all the possible symptoms that one could experience, but CDC is continuing to update that list as we do learn more. The recent news of a COVID-19 vaccine being approved for distribution in the United States has sparked so many questions, some of which include what is the vaccine? How can we be sure that this vaccine is safe? And what does the vaccine distribution look like in the United States? Sure. Well, although CDC doesn't have a role in actually developing COVID-19 vaccines, CDC has been working very closely with health departments and partners to develop vaccination plans for vaccine distribution and administration. The ultimate goal is for everyone to be able to easily get vaccinated against COVID-19 as soon as large enough quantities are actually available. Once vaccine is widely available, then the plan is to have several thousand vaccination providers offering the COVID-19 vaccines in places like the doctor's offices, 
retail pharmacies, hospitals, and even federally qualified health centers. Now, regarding vaccine safety, it's important to remember that the U.S. vaccine safety system makes sure that all vaccines are as safe as possible. And reviews by the FDA and the Advisory Committee on Immunization Practices will ensure that any of the recommended vaccines are safe and effective. And vaccine monitoring systems will actually be able to help us watch for possible side effects after a vaccine is approved for use. That's really good to know. I know a lot of people have been asking, especially about the safety and this being the first kind of this vaccine. Yeah, these are important questions. I'm glad your viewers are asking them. Yeah, so am I. (laughs) So a lot of people, myself included, are struggling mentally as a result of the pandemic. And this is something that I talk about on my channel very openly. Quarantines and this difficult year as a whole are contributing to that as well. So what are some safe ways to take care of your mind and body during COVID-19? Yeah, Hannah, the COVID-19 pandemic can really take a toll on mental health and well-being, and I'm with you on that. But, you know, remembering to really take a break physically, mentally, and emotionally, and really when doing that, taking time to just give back to yourself, even if just for 15 minutes can really help reduce stress and improve your emotional well-being. I can offer you some examples of ways that my friends and I, my colleagues, have really creatively tried to cope with the COVID-19 pandemic during this very difficult time. So for example, taking a walk or going for a bike ride outside, that's been a really big one. Um, I know that all across the United States, we're experiencing different weather, so if you can't do that, Try challenging yourself to take a break from maybe social media or the news throughout the day or even a couple of days during the week to give your mind and body a rest. Take up a new hobby such as painting or running. I know that that's one that really helps me. And then um, this is also a really good time to hone a new skill by taking free online classes in an interesting subject or doing something creative like trying a new recipe. And the other thing that I think is really important is try to stick to a daily routine, like getting up in the morning for school or for work and getting dressed and even designating a workstation in your home so that you can really try to program your day and program in relaxation for yourself before and during the kind of more stressful parts of your day start. No, those are really good tips. And I definitely have implemented a lot of the creative ones. I have taken up some hobbies. I'm learning how to play the piano right now. And it's been so it's been so nice and so fun. So it's a really good escape. So I one hundred percent agree with everything that you said. Also, obviously, the holiday season. The holidays look very different this year. How can we celebrate the holidays in a safe way? Well, I will say that the safest way to celebrate the winter holidays is to celebrate at home with people who live with you. So travel and gatherings with family and friends who don't live with you can increase your chances of getting or spreading COVID-19 or the flu. So if you do gather with people who don't live with you, gatherings and activities that are held outdoors are much safer than indoor gatherings but ultimately celebrating virtually or with the people you live with is the safest way to celebrate this holiday season. Absolutely. Yeah, and you know, Hannah, I've heard some really cool ideas to virtually gather this season. Some of them could be hosting a virtual celebration with your friends and family, Mm -hmm. gathering virtually for a gift exchange, or even decorating this season. I know that personally, Dancing and music are two really important aspects of my family's holiday traditions. So what we're doing is we're throwing a virtual dance party featuring a holiday playlist that we oh, all that. collaborated on. So we're really looking forward to that. That's so feel free to idea. take that. That's such a good idea. Even yeah. if we have to do it differently, it's still it's still so much fun and so much joy. And it's really not even That's- about, it's just about, you know, showing people that you love them. Finally, is there any timeline that you could give us for when we can expect things to improve? And what kind of steps do we as a society need to take to adhere to this timeline? Well, unfortunately, we don't have a specific timeline for when things will improve. And we do know that COVID-19 cases and deaths are continuing to rise all across the United States. The changes that we've had to make to our routines and our daily life are extremely, extremely hard. But 
these are actually the changes that are even more important to continue to implement now and in the future. The more steps that we and our families can take to slow the spread of COVID-19, the safer we and our families will ultimately be. So thinking about it this way, we can all pitch in to slow the spread of COVID-19 by wearing a mask to protect ourselves and others, watching our distance by staying at least six feet apart from others who don't live with us and avoiding crowds, and finally washing our hands often with soap and water for at least 20 seconds, which again is the amount of time that it takes to sing the happy birthday song twice or using a hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol. Together, we can slow the spread of COVID-19. You kind of you kind of feel like you're one person and yeah. maybe one person won't make that much of a difference, but if every single one of us is one person. That's right. So, together, each one that's person right. doing an act, you know, is a catalyst for change, and I think that's also really important to remember. You know, this is this time is a time where we're all banding together and this won't last forever.